NAMI. This is our mission statement. We're basically involved with three things. Support in the form of different flavors of support groups. Specifically, we have support groups for friends and family of someone with a mental health challenge. We have uh, education programs like family to family as well as education programs for professionals, providers. And last but not least, advocacy. You probably can't see back there, but I'm wearing this little pin here that says keep the promise. We are extremely active up at the Capitol when the legislature is in session. So again, those are the three things that NAMI is involved with, support, education, and advocacy. And that includes, you know, advocating for increased research funding. What are some of the barriers that people run into trying to uh, recover from uh, mental health issues. Some of it can be cultural, some of it can be language, uh, ideas on ideology, I love that word. I had to look it up, I didn't know what that meant. Basically it's the causation of mental illness. Uh, some cultures believe it's a visitation from a bad spirit or punishment from God. So there's things that you have to deal with before you can get to the root of the problem. Certainly stigma, we'll talk about more of that. But for children, in a lot of cases, the parent or caretaker doesn't know anything about mental health and mental illness. I sure didn't. When John got sick, it was Nami that helped me out to get up to speed on that, because I had no idea. Uh, certainly, the perceptions of the parents and or the family about mental illness can be a barrier. You know, some parents don't want their kids to be labeled, understandably, because of the stigma and the fear and that can keep people from reaching out for support and for help. Um, now I could stand up here for an hour and tell you all the ways that the mental health system here in Connecticut could be better, but compared to the other 50 states, we actually have a pretty good public health system here. Um, NAMI as an organization has done this thing called grading the states, where it graded the uh, entire 50 states' mental health systems. Connecticut was one of six states that got a grade of a B. No state got an A. Scary, though, is the fact that six states failed completely. There were as many states that got Bs that got an F. And of the remaining states that got Cs and Ds, there were more Ds than Cs. So the average grade of the mental health system in the United States is like a D plus, which is scary. For many years, families were actually blamed for their loved one's mental illness. So it's kind of like insult to injury. The doctors and the professionals would blame the parents for their child's mental illness. Families would also blame themselves, which is also not helpful. Um, and because of that, you know, the loved one's illness was often hidden away. You know, it just wouldn't, wasn't talked about. Um, again, parents don't want their kids to be labeled, and if the parent has a mental illness, that just compounds the problem. And these are genetically based diseases, so it's not unusual for it to come right down the family tree. But the saying was that genetics loads the gun and the environment or trauma pulls the trigger. Because people can have the genetic tendency to have an illness, but until there's that environmental uh, incident, some triggering event, it may be late for years. Mental illness is a disease of the brain. It's typically chronic. If you have it, there's no cure for it. If you don't understand how these diseases manifest, how they are an actual chemical imbalance in the brain, you're apt to say stuff like that, which is, again, not very helpful. It's not related to character or intelligence. You know, again, it's not a willpower thing. It's not someone being bad. They actually have an illness. Um, it typically will affect the parts of the brain that regulate moods, thoughts, and perception. 75% of mental illness happens between the ages of 15 and 25. Again, right when people are kind of in their primary lives, right when they're getting ready to transition from uh, K through 12, you know, primary school into uh, higher education. All ages, however, are susceptible. We've seen children with it, and actually older adults, you know, retirement age and older, you see a, another spike. Uh, diagnoses. But, as in the case with my son, recovery is definitely possible. 70 to 90 percent of people can uh, you know, have a significant reduction in the symptoms and, and live a decent quality of life 
again, assuming that they work on their recovery, they get the treatment they need, um, if they need medication, uh, they take it. But the early identification and treatment is very important. That's a big thing that Omni is about as an organization. We want to get rid of the stigma so people are not afraid to reach out and get the help that they need so that they can get involved early on. They can avoid, if they've got an illness that uh, has psychosis, if they can avoid that first psychotic break, it's huge. Because once you have that first psychotic break, it's so much harder to get someone up into recovery because you're just really facing a very steep hill at that point. Uh, some of the challenges involved, you know, lack of health insurance, though with the uh, introduction of the ACA, that's less of an issue, especially here in Connecticut. Um, but suicide's an issue. Uh, I was surprised, I wasn't aware of this, but smoking, 41% uh, of the uh, population has used mental illness, smoke as opposed to 22% of the general population. It's basically a form of self-medication is what it is. Uh, obesity, and that's because of the side effects to a lot of these medications is weight gain. Uh, because of the weight gain, then you run into things like heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. It's hard for families initially to deal with these things. You know, unless you've got a background and you don't know what you're dealing with, it can be very overwhelming. Um, it can affect the family both uh, financially as well as the, just the relationships within the family. Uh, this is the stages of acceptance. Um, it's very similar to the grieving process. People typically start out with denial. This isn't happening. My kid's not sick. They certainly don't have a mental illness. <coughs> Once you get past that, the typical response is anger. How can this be happening to me? This is not fair, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then hopefully you get to the point where it's acceptance and recovery, but not everyone gets there. Um, the good thing about NAMI as an organization, you know, we use that three-step um, process, if you will, in all our support groups and all our training classes. We talk about it so that we you're aware that it's normal to be in denial at first. And then it's normal to feel anger. Feel like, you know, you've been given a raw deal or that life has cheated you. And hopefully you do get to a point where you can accept it because once you get there, that's a better place to be and where you can be most helpful to your loved one who's dealing with the issue. One of the things that NAMI did as an organization uh, we, uh, when we went to get the family-to-family uh, -family class certified as an evidence-based training, they actually did the research, ran the numbers, and found that families that had reached out for help got the training and the information in the family-to-family -family class tended to stay together. Families that didn't often would burn the bridge with the loved one who had the illness and they just had no more um, interaction with them. But in many cases, if it was a child, the parents would end up getting divorced because the stresses and strains on the marriage were just so great. It's actually typical that's what happens. It just completely blows the family apart. But if you have the support through support groups, you get the education through the education classes, you have a much greater chance of staying together as a family. Uh, the whole idea here is to get people aware what the different symptoms are, what to look out for, whether it's family, whether it's professionals, whether it's kids, because we want to make the awareness that these things are very common, but because of the stigma, people don't like to talk about it. We're trying to get rid of the stigma, because there really shouldn't be any stigma. These are biological brain disorders. It's no different than having the flu or having cancer or heart disease or anything else, and there should be no stigma associated with it. But because it typically manifests itself as behavioral, that's why there's the stigma. Because think, people think they're just kids being bad. No, it's not bad, it's sick. It's a I certainly don't want to leave people with the impression that there's nothing you can do and it's just all bad. Because one of the things we do as an organization is always encourage hope. Um, hope for a better future, hope for better treatments. The best thing you can do is be supportive without being enabling, and sometimes that's a fine line. It's not unusual for family members um, of loved ones who live in a bad place. That's what happens. They come to the support group because they don't know what to do. They've tried everything. They've encouraged the loved one to get the help. And because these illnesses tend to make the person blind to their illness, 
it's very, very hard to do. It's the evil of Cash 22, if you will, with a mental health challenge. So all I can encourage you to do is reach out for support, be there for the person, talk to them when they're open to be hearing your voice, but don't nag them otherwise, because you're just talking to the wall at that point. In fact, you can push people away if you keep engaging when they don't want to hear it. Uh, you have to be patient and hope for the best. The whole idea here is to get people aware of what the different symptoms are, what to look out for, whether it's family, whether it's professionals, whether it's kids, because we want to make the awareness that these things are very common, but because of the stigma, people don't like to talk about it. We're trying to get rid of the stigma, because there really shouldn't be any stigma. 